All right. After a long week there, I'm finally back. I'm going to try a basic turn in Panzer just to show people how it works. Um, I did have a first video for this, but I kind of screwed it up a lot. I wanted to go back and make sure I got the rules right. We're going to be doing a basic game turn. And it's just a little something I set up here. And it's going to be fairly simple. It's a little bit not a fair matchup, I would guess. We're going to have... Uh, just a, just so I can show people how these things work. And I want to walk through it for myself, of course, because I want to make sure I get it right. But we're going to take a look at two... Uh, we have two Russian uh, T-26 uh, tanks here uh, sitting in this town. Uh, just uh, any Russian town. And this is going to be available. These are available throughout the war. But we're going to be having them uh, searching for a Panzer III that's rolling down the track. So we say it's like mid-42, right? And these two are in a town hexes here, as you can see. And uh, not the best uh, Russian tank to judge things by for this uh, sample turn that we're doing here. But uh, I didn't, I kind of picked the cards and I tried to do it by points, right? So two of these would be uh, 56 points against a 53 point Panzer 3M. And even though I tried to get the points right, it ended up being uh, not exactly too fair. So we're going to have to kind of see what happens here. But I think this is a totally unfair match due to the armor penetration. And the armor on the on the German tank is 14. And these poor T26s, they can't even penetrate that front armor. Now these trees are going to be three, a height of three. Uh, according to this, they would be uh, just woods, right? And Woods is a height of three. If you look on your uh, terrain chart here, the height column I highlighted for you guys is a three. So uh, it's pretty tall. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, there's nothing there. All right, so there's no spotting there, and the German player cannot see the Soviet tanks. So there's no spotting. We're going to move on to the command phase. And I'm going to place a move command here on the Panzer. And you can kind of, uh, some people roll when you're doing solo to see who places first. I guess you could do that. Uh, the command phase is executed prior to initiative phase. Players must therefore commit their commands without knowledge of who is going to be first or second. Welcome to the fog of war. All right. And then we go to that grand initiative phase. So the... I don't know if I want these Soviet tanks to be super aggressive or kind of just sit there and take this because this, they have some good cover, but I feel like if they move up, then they're just going to be torched. And we have some interesting shell holes here. I think that's what those are. Yeah, those are shell holes. Very interesting terrain type. And then we have light woods here. So light woods have the little dots. It's an important thing to remember. Then there's woods and then there's uh, like heavy woods or the darker green. They don't... We do have some of those on the map way up here. Uh, oh, I should probably explain. Well, we'll wait till that comes around. Uh, so I'm going to give him a move command. Um, let's go. We're going to go overwatch on both of the Soviet tanks. It's not really going to do any good. This is kind of a mismatch. I should have picked better vehicles, but I just wanted to see you guys to see the flow of how this works. That's the command phase, so that's two. Then we go to the initiative phase. And it's important that you understand, this is where I got this wrong. I wanna thank Rough Swords, uh, Swordsman Gamer for the uh, shout out here on uh, paying attention to what this says. Winner determines first or second player. You don't automatically become the first player if you win, you determine. So that's key because the second player in the, in the movement phase, the second player is going to move first. They flip it. Um, in the combat phase, the first player will fire first, and then they kind of flip it around. So uh, I think we're going to, we'll roll initiative, and we'll see what happens. Now, there's no – they're not going to be – we can play with better rules later, but uh, there's not going to be any um, experience, where they're veteran uh, or elite veteran season regular. These guys are just going to be just regular troops. So nothing nothing special there. Okay, initiative is pretty easy. You're, they're both gonna you're, they're both gonna roll, and then we'll see what happens. I don't have my dice towers back out yet, so you guys will have to forgive me. And we're we're gonna roll here, and let me make sure I put the tanks facing the proper direction. I did not 
first mistake right here, these guys should be facing like this. Don't get fooled by the way the writing is on the counter. Always face the front of the tank toward that hex side there that you're facing. Uh, so I kind of messed that up. Okay, uh, I just wanted to catch that before. All right, so basically we're gonna roll uh, percentile dice. The highest uh, gets the um, gets to the choice of what they want to do. So uh, the Germans will be white here. All right, 29, and the Soviets will be white. 74. So now the Soviets are going to decide what happens here. Uh, the Soviets are going to want to... Mm, let me think about this. If they decide to be the first player, that would force the German... Well, then they would have to shoot. That doesn't really matter too much. Um, yeah, the Soviets will be the first player. So you want to take your... Oh, excuse me. Your initiative track counter, you put that on Soviets for turn one. Just kind of add a, a, like a friendly reminder, right? There you go. And then we'll come back here. And now we go on to the combat phase. And obviously here, uh, direct fire. The first player, the Soviets, they don't have a shot. The German player does not have a shot. Overwatches, nothing can be done there. Now we go to the movement phase. And we don't have close assault. Red is an advanced game. So then we go down to uh, the second player moves now. And so we're going to go ahead and move. I'll show you how the movement works. And I'll show you where that information is kind of located there. So the first thing you want to do is look at the type of movement that the German tank uses. And it's a, it's a tracked vehicle. Okay. And you're going to see some numbers here. But the key thing to remember is even though they're on this card, uh, they're also on the counter. So 4T69, well, what do you know? They're also on the counter in case some of you are wondering what those weird uh, logos mean. And then I'll kind of go through what the rule book says about that. Uh, all vehicles are marked. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the first two are listed in combination to determine the cross-country movement speed allowance and the mode of traction. So the 4T right here means it uses, it's a tracked vehicle. And same with the Soviet tank here, uh, 2T right there, 4.7. And then you have your cross-country movement speed allowance, mode of traction. And the third element is the path movement. And the fourth is the road movement. And we are on a path, the gray, I don't think there's a road on this part of the map. The gray, the gray thing here is the path, right? So... Uh, it'll, if it helps you remember, you can always look at the counter to see what the movement allowances are. So the third element is the vehicle's path movement speed allowance, and the fourth is road. So if I'm reading this right, he can move six on a path, nine on a road. The negative five, I can't remember. That might be an advanced game thing. Um, and you can expend any portion of your available movement speed allowance. Uh, you don't have to use the, the whole thing. So... Just a heads up, that's what these numbers mean, and they're also duplicated on the card. And you get a free 60 degree turn, right? And in order to get path movement, you have to start on the path and do conti uh, continuous hexes. So we're just gonna advance the German to get him. We wanna get him where he can spot uh, the Soviets here. We have to pan out just a little bit. We, we kinda wanna put him a little bit we got to skirt these trees. Remember, if you go along the edge of a hex side like this, it's considered blocked, I believe. Uh, so we kind of want to get right about... Uh, see, that's going to be... Nope. That's close. Yeah, we'll give him that. Well, let's get him to here to take a shot at here, because then this Soviet tank is not going to have a shot, I believe. So... Uh, we'll try that. Now, as soon as you move in this game, you're going to get spotted. So you want to put a spotted move, and you want to face that toward the front of the tank. So he's spotted for movement. If he fires, you're going to take this and flip it. But the key thing here is that moving will make you spotted. Now, there is, there is a range in spotting hexes and things like that. You can take to mitigate that, but uh, just so you know, he's going to, you know, they're going to see some dust rumbling there. So uh, I think we're at six and path movement. You can look uh, here, road path. 
uh, you want to go to the T, right, for tracked, and you go down this, and it's 1. So there you go. That's how you use that chart. All right, so we're going to go 1. Oh, and they recommend putting this command uh, here, like that. So we're going to go 1, 2, and then it gets a free turn. And you always face hex sides in this game. 3, 4... shot there that's still too close I think he's gonna have a shot uh, let's see yep he's gonna have to move up here five he gets a free turn and he's gonna have to go head on I think well he's not afraid of these tanks but they do have some cover so we'll see what happens now the key to remember here is that the Russians are on overwatch right now the other the spotting phase hasn't happened yet so the german tank is spotted but these russian tanks are in the, they have not we haven't done a spotting phase yet so they haven't been spotted but if i decide to overwatch fire here i'm just trying to think is there is there ever any chance for me to get a side shot no so in the basic game front armor and rear armor is divided like this across this ha this counter see that so there was never really a chance for him to get a bad sh back shot. So um, does he want to waste the time to go ahead? The German player would have to try to spot him in there. If I fire Overwatch right now, uh, I'm going to be spotted during... Whoops, pardon me there. I'm going to be spotted due to firing. Yeah, I'm not sure I have another one of those. Yeah, there. So if I did that, he would then be fire spotted this guy would still be hanging out in there overwatch is never mandatory so um oh boy that's tough so if you're wondering about overwatch when you're moving uh while the second player is moving right uh the first player announces and resolves all desired overwatch fire by vehicles marked with unrevealed ow commands at opposing vehicles as they move and you don't have to be previously spotted when you use Overwatch to fire. At least that's the way I was reading it. Uh, if that's wrong, let me know. Um, Overwatch enables any vehicle combat unit to voluntarily fire at a spotted vehicle, which he is because he moved, in an earlier step or in response to a spotted vehicle moving during the movement phase. Note that the target vehicle may be spotted as a result of his current action. So that's where I'm getting that from. That's on page um, 14 of the rule book here, in case you're wondering. So, you know what? I'll take a shot. I know in my heart of hearts that this is not going to do shit. So, but let's take a shot. And you're probably thinking, no, you got to wait till they get closer. But I just want to show you guys how this works. Um, we're going to fire on this target. We're going to fire on him. And we'll keep the other one quiet, you know, here in the buildings. But he'll probably be, we'll see how the spotting goes. Uh, all right. So he'll fire. He gets a spotted command. And now we just need to count the range. And the German player is pretty much done because he just had the, the movement and he didn't do a short halt or anything. So I believe that's a legal move. Uh, so he would be done. And let's count our range here. This is what we're looking at. I'm going to do this for video purposes in case people are watching. And they, they kind of skip ahead. But I know I got to start putting chapters in my videos there. Okay, so... All right, we're going to take a shot here, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's a range of eight. Now on your Soviet gun here, let's take a look if this is even worth it. So it's medium. It's a penetration of eight. He doesn't stand a chance in hell of... I don't know if there's a special critical thing that, that will allow, maybe in the advanced game, if it's so bad. Like right now, you wouldn't stand a chance. So I don't know if there's something that makes that more fair. Or like, you know, a leader or like a super critical hit that you could roll. Uh, but it's, I don't think he's going to be able to do anything. All right, so let's see how this would work. Um, let's go through the direct fire step here and I'll kind of, how this, so how this goes. Um, you can also overwatch during the fire phase too. Uh, additional overwatch fire may be triggered as a result of earlier overwatch fire, causing it causing a cascading effect where one initial overwatch shot could trigger a whole series. 
Because then once you shoot, you become spotted. Then this guy's like, I'm going to fire at him. And then this guy's like, well, I'm going to fire back at you. And it just kind of goes through that. Uh, all right. So we know we're turreted. You have a TT factor on your sheet here, TT1. That means you have a turret, TT2, like so. So that kind of lets you know that your vehicles have turrets, in case you're wondering about that, because there are fixed facings on uh, tur non-turreted vehicles, and there's a front field of fire, et cetera. Uh, all right, so the AP range factor, we already determined you take the range in hexes and you go across to you have equal to or greater, and we have eight. So we're at medium right there. So we have an AP range factor. And then we go to hit modifiers. This is going to be rough. So uh, the target size is on the card. So you do have to check your target size. Uh, it's found in the defensive information area. Size zero. So there's no modifiers there. Now the Russians, oddly enough, these are some dinky little tanks. They have minus one. So right now our modifiers are zero. The target was moving, so there's minus two. Okay, so just uh, heads up on that. So there's a minus two. Uh, light, medium, or heavy cover? Nah, we're, we're open. Uh, SB short halt SB zero other. If the firing vehicle has a short halt command, we don't. Uh, the shooter's not damaged. Uh, Overwatch. If the vehicle firing is executing Overwatch at a target located within its front field of fire, the modifier is minus one. So now we're at negative two. Or I'm sorry, negative three. So we have movement and Overwatching. If the firing vehicle is executing Overwatch fire at a target outside its front field of fire. The modifier is negative three. Only turreted and turreted vehicles may execute overwatch at vehicles located. So they're saying basically um, no matter what on overwatch, you're going to get a minus one. But if you have to rotate your turret, you're going to get even more penalties. But we're at minus three right now. So we want to reference the AP hit table on game card A. And we're at range medium. And we always start here. <laughs> uh and we have a net modifier of negative three, so we're down to 35%, right? So you take your range and you start, you zero it out and then we're at negative three. So the movement and the overwatch fire, basically because it's a snapshot. Um, and we don't, the front, we know it's gonna be a front armor shot, all right? Now, we need to find the armor penetration. Find the portion of the firing vehicle's data card with the name of the weapon type column of the offensive information section. So we go here and it's AP and move along the penetration sub row for the AP row until finding the values just below that. So eight, that value is the AP factor. So we know we're at minus three, eight AP. This is, I, unless there's some sort of critical hit, it's bleh, gonna be great. Uh, if the firing vehicle's AP penetration factor is greater or equal to the target vehicle's armor factor to shot penetrated. If less, it has no effect. Bigger is not necessarily better. So here, I'm kind of like, ee. Um, if the penetration factor is equal to or greater than the armor factor by one to three. So yeah, I'm not really sure if I can even damage this guy, but we're going to find out, all right? Uh, it's it's going to be interesting. Uh, all right, so we have our number. And now we need to roll the hit. So you always need to get below that number. We're at, um, what do we say? 35%. Ugh. I don't know if this is worth it. All right, blue will be the first number this time. 81, that is a clear miss. All right, takes a shot, misses, and the German player is like, holy smokes. We got something in that town right ahead. So not looking good there. All right, um... Now, I did not issue a fire command for the German player, etc. So, uh, that is pretty much going to be the end of that first turn, right? And you go to this adjustment phase where you kind of uh, clear up, adjust, and remove counters and things like that. Now, the spotted markers are not going to fall off unless I do something to... Um, like back him up into here and tuck the German player into here. Uh, you get to kind of sit there and we get a spotted move. So uh, that's kind of one whole turn. And then uh, that's pretty much how a turn of this game works. So if he, if the German's going to fire on the Russians, 
uh, next turn, you just kind of look at uh, the target size, right? And say the German player doesn't move, it's negative one. And then you got to look at the type of cover he's in. So he's in, uh, what are they, what are they, what's the technical term for these buildings? Well, these buildings are a different color. I wonder if that means so. Let me check the back of the book here. Um, brick building? It is. Okay. So a brick building, uh, cover, medium, 1.7 and 8. So he's got medium cover. Uh, so that's negative 3. That's negative 4 for the German player already. Uh, and hopefully he doesn't move. But, yeah, negative 4. Uh, that's going to be, what's the range here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if you look on the German card, let's say he gets to fire first. Uh, AP, 8. So he's still at short. So 14 minus 4, that's, um, uh, I'm sorry. So 14 is his penetration still because he's at short range. And the Soviet armor, remember, in the basic game, it's down here. And he's just going to blow right through that. So if he hits at minus four, he will blow this guy up. I can guarantee you he'll blow it up because he's at 14. But if you want, we can just like roll that out and see if he hits. And then that'll be it for this demonstration. I just wanted you to show the flow. You know, you got to do the initiative and stuff like that. I just wanted to show the flow of how this works. You know, and if I messed it up, just let me know. But we're at short range. We're at negative four. We need 42% to hit uh, white. Oh, 33 so that would be a hit, uh, and I'm pretty sure that uh, 14 minus 6 is probably going to be a KO. It's not damaged. Um, if greater by 4 to 9, it suffers a KO, yeah. So he would probably knock that tank out. So I believe that is a standard turn basic game of how things are going, Panzer. Uh, you know, if you have any comments to add, let me know. But you can see the basic game flows pretty well. Uh, I don't think there's any bonus armor if you're in a building or something. Let me just make sure I didn't miss any. Let's make sure we didn't miss anything here. Okay, he, he wouldn't be moved. Target did not move, but he does have the cover. He's minus one for small. There's no overwatch. I don't think there's anything there. And then he would be spotted fire by moving. Oh, we do have to spot. I forgot. Just, I'm just kind of gl glossing over this, but I do want to see if he would be able to spot him. Maybe not. Who knows, right? Spotting ranges. Let's see. What is a brick building again? I keep forgetting this stuff. Building brick. Medium cover. Minus two. Seven. Uh-oh. Well, during the spotting phase... I do believe that that would drop because when you go to spot and if he doesn't say they have a no command or overwatch, uh, I don't think he can spot them. So maybe the German player doesn't ha get to have a shot because what you do is you your base spotting range is the V the V20 here. I believe that's for the basic game. And we can go over that because we didn't really cover uh, spotting – you know, if you, you know, what the modifiers might be. Uh, so let's just take a look real quick here. Uh, okay. Cross reference by the turn, the cover type. Yeah. When attempting to spot a vehicle, cross reference the V column with the base row. The V column is the general spotting category for all vehicles. In the basic game, the base range may increase or decrease due to the target vehicle's cover and whether or not it fired or moved. Okay. They're all cumulative. Uh oh. So. He's got medium cover, so minus two. Uh, he, the German player may not be able to see that. So the next couple of turns would be interesting, but due to the way that I picked these tanks, the Soviet player is going to have to work really hard to knock out that German player. He's going to have to move and try to flank him and get behind him. Uh, and their movement is 4-7, uh, 2-4-7. Uh, it's just not the greatest movement. So... Uh, I probably picked not the best example here of uh, this armored vehicle clash, but I just wanted to show you guys um, how that works because uh, with a two movement, you know, they're going to have to try to go up, up, and then here, and then it's going to be ugly. And he, at least he even has a four uh, cross country, so he can outmaneuver. He's got better armor, uh, and it didn't work. I mean, I would probably need to probably like three of these things 
so that the German player is just like, ah, where am I going to shoot? And someone can maybe get behind him, but uh, probably not the best example. But anyway, uh, that's kind of how a turn works. And I wanted to walk through that. And then I'm going to try to go and do some real scenarios and things like that. And I've seen some people like add different advanced or basic rules to the game. So that could be kind of fun. You kind of work them in like bogged down and things like that. So, all right. Anyway, uh, comments below and I'll be back a little bit later with this. Uh, and some Fallout Wasteland Warfare. We're still going to be covering some miniature stuff on this channel. So uh, maybe I'll make that a certain day. And then if you war gamers want, you can tune me out. But uh, I think Fallout Wasteland Warfare will interest some because it's got co-op and solo in it with a with a uh, programmed AI for the enemy. So, And if you're a fan of the Fallout series, video games, etc., uh, you'll definitely want to tune in for that. All right. Thanks for watching and let me know what I did wrong below. Thanks again.